here we go. You know what time it is? It's DraftKings time. Actually, I have my draft. One of my drafts today. Fantasy draft. Anyway, uh, we're talking about how you could win $2 million in week one at DraftKings.com. It's America's favorite one-week fantasy football site. I think even Canada likes it. I, I, I might be wrong. And who but... doesn't love the CFL? Right. No. What? Yes. Yeah, exactly. It's the DraftKings.com. It's the biggest fantasy football contest ever. $10 million in prizes are up for grabs, including $2 million for first place and $1 million for second. One week fantasy means no season long commitments. It's fantasy football on demand. You play what you where you want, when you want, with the players you want. You don't play what you want. It's football. You yeah. can't say I'm fa- I'm, I'm playing dra- pickleball. I'm drafting my <laughs> ping pong team, and it'll challenge your football team. See, we have weapons. They're paddles. <laughs> it's it's strictly football, folks. You just pick up your players, you pile up the points, and you pick up your cash. That's it. You've never experienced football like this. Every game feels like the playoffs, even in week one, which happens this weekend. It is in fantasy as usual. This is DraftKings. Welcome to the big time. By the way, hurry over to DraftKings.com now and use the promo code SPREAKER to play for free for a shot at two. Two million dollars in the week one millionaire maker. Enter SPREAKER for free. Uh, for a free entry now at DraftKings.com. Tell them what that is, Chuck. It's... DraftKings.com. You got that right. What now? Huh? Huh? What'd you say? I wasn't listening. I'm sorry, who? <laughs> what are we talking about? I have no idea. Oh, DraftKings.com. Draft- yeah, that, dra- DraftKings.com. <laughs> All right. Enough of this foolishness. Let's start the show, shall we? Colleen, are you ready? I'm ready. You don't look ready. Are you, you can ready? hear me? I didn't think you could hear me, so I wasn't talking. Sorry. You had your mic off for a moment. Yeah. I didn't do that. Yeah. Here we go. Congratulations, you found the Twin Cities hit show. Very well. Where do I begin? Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? You're lucky to be here. Thank you, sir. Reach for this one. (laughs) And now, a real hit show. You just don't want to learn anything. You just don't want to listen to anybody. Live from the Twin Cities. Say, what are you trying to say? (laughs) <laughs> Trying to say I'm queer? Is that it? <laughs> Little Marianne? Little Marjorie Jen? <laughs> On the street? Huh? Is that it? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Is that your idea of communicating something to me? Is it? Well, is it? It's the Twin Cities hit show. I'm talking about my life. I can't seem to get that through to you. I'm not just talking about one person. I'm talking about everybody. I'm talking about form. I'm talking about content. I'm talking about interrelationships. I'm talking about God, the devil, hell, heaven. Do you understand? Finally! Let's get this hit show started. Oh, boy. What? He was so adamant. That was a pushy, pushy dude. Who recorded our family's dinner conversation? Who did that? (laughs) (laughs) Dad gets so angry at the dinner. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Did, did you move your mic, by the way? Was it because I, I thought I had them all arranged, and all of a sudden, did you? Slide? I turned it a little bit. Why do you oh, want okay. me to have that, it? No, no, back it's fine. But I had. The, I, Are you obsessive compulsive? Do you? Yeah. No, I just want. I want to sign blame on her instead of myself. No. Do you have to touch the doorknob many times? And seventeen, but I don't think that's an unreasonable amount of times to touch a doorknob. If he doesn't do this, his mom will die. <laughs> He's got to do it. Got to happen. Let's be real. <laughs> Hey, how uh, hi hi hi, Colleen. How was uh, how was the first day of school for you? Was it good? I, don't you feel like you got run over by a train? No, it was Why? nice. I took the oh. day and I did stuff. I got stuff. We oh. just I didn't have anyone to worry about, and it was just kind of nice just to run errands and do what I do. I went to McDonald's and I got a cheeseburger, which I rarely do. And then I rented two movies, and I sat and I ate my cheeseburger and watched two damn movies. So, so you should out. be relaxed. I would, no, it's because I was in hiding after the entire the day of, and it's day two by the way. My son already missed his bus for middle school. On wow. Day two. Wow, he's, he's my kids woke up sick. fifty percent. Yeah. They woke up sick with coughs and sore yeah. throats. I'm like, sorry, yeah. you can't go home yeah. sick on the second day. <laughs> yeah, you got to power through. Give it to the other power kids. Through. <laughs> Give it to the what other kids. were Not the really. two movies? Um, still Alice. Oh my god. I was gonna say you Did porn you, you porn doesn't count. Yeah, Those no, are only yeah. like three yeah. minutes. Oh, I watched like fourteen movies yesterday <laughs> <laughs> in two minute clips. Um and uh the other one was Mature the, MILFs, what the, else? Yeah, the Gambler. Which I've seen before, it turns out. The Gambler with James Conner, the remake. The remake. Um, who's who's in the remake? Wahlberg. Oh, Mark and, uh, Wahlberg. Uh, yeah, and I, I, I watched it again. It like I'm like eh. 
That was all right. You know, I I like uh, Goodman. I'm just a yeah. Huge isn't Goodman. that John Goodman playing the heavy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shave his head. It had a nice end to it, but it was it was all right. Do you miss his haircut? Uh, Goodman. Isn't he a shaved head one? And yeah. Oh yeah. No, he's freaky looking, and he's shamelessly in a towel with just spilling out and old man fat because he's not a skinny no, fella. He did lose a lot of weight for a while though. Yeah. Well, and he was it, still a big guy, but he yeah. had lost a lot of his you, Roseanne weight. Yeah. He he and he wasn't maybe that heavy, but there was a lot of skin. Just it was it was gross. But <laughs> I he, I like that that guy very comfortably wears that and keeps his persona going. It was a great movie. I went to a screening last Ooh, night. Detail. The visit. Has anyone heard anything oh, about this? Oh, was a scary movie? M. Night visit Shyamalan? Grandma and Grandpa? Oh. Yes. Was I haven't really good? heard anything I about it. it to be good. Tell I was hoping good. for any other movie to go see. It's M. Night Shyamalan yeah. Yeah. Ding Dong, yeah. which uh, ever since The Sixth Sense, right. each movie has gotten progressively worse. worse. Yep. My son worse. says he's overrated. My 11 year Well, <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised Hollywood keeps giving him money. Yeah. Granted, there's no stars in this one. But Actually, ooh, is his, it good? His is last, it? his oh, last big I'm one was a Wahlberg so film. I, I a big scary one to good. come out. I don't know if it'll have the same thing that Sixth Sense does, but if you run into anyone who's having conversations, say, "Don't tell me." Yes. Don't tell me. Yeah. I did figure it out with like twenty minutes to go, but when I figured, it, I went, "Oh, that's brilliant!" Oh, I'm gonna have to see it. I love. There's something scary about. The normal, like mm-hmm. yeah. old people doing yeah. weird stuff. Or, exactly. You know what I mean? It's not like a horrible, gruesome slasher. Okay, give me the or premise because I'm not familiar. I don't know. Someone don't give me the me. premise. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Do you want to know? No. Yeah, you no. want me to tell you? No. no. I'm sorry. So, Some, someone give me the premise. I don't even know. What it's, uh, I thought it was about a menstruation. A normal single mom. Mm-hmm. You know, she's kind of the fun single mom, and uh, she, something happened in her teenage, late teenage years where she hasn't spoken to her parents in a long time, and they've actually become counselors, of all things, with, you know, to have a dysfunctional family. Uh, she needs someone to babysit because she's met a dude, and they want to go on a uh, cruise. Yeah. And coincidentally, the grandma has reached out, and we really want to meet our grandchildren. This is dumb. We've never met our grandchildren. Yeah. So sh- the grandchildren are like, yes, we want to meet grandma and grandpa. Okay, so put the brakes go. on. As a parent, in real life, as a parent, would you let your parents, who you've never met, really spend any time with, show up, meet your kids, and spend a week with them while you're on a, a cruise? On a, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, no. yes. It all depends on why there yeah. was this okay. 15 years yeah. of yeah. silence. And right. the Which mom I'm sure you don't know. Felt, she, the mom knows the story, said, you can ask grandma. Uh, she can tell you. Uh, she felt safe enough that to allow it to happen. But then, yeah. yeah, then it becomes, is this... Well, I don't want to say too okay. much. Well, I want to see this. When is it actually in theaters? Uh, Friday. Oh, Colleen. I'm yeah. so happy that it's People have movie. to keep quiet on it, though, okay. for right. you to enjoy it. Because if... It's funny, the, the, I told a guy, I did a Rod Simon show. Mm-hmm. Rod, if you're listening, we want you to come in Monday when the Vikings play Monday night. Rod oh, is the sports call. guy. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I was doing his show, Game On, and uh, they taped yesterday before the screening. Should we get Rod in on Monday? Yeah, let's get Rod right in on okay. Monday. Uh, his producer, who said, oh, funny story, I went to go see The Sixth Sense, mm-hmm. and my wife is in there, and about 19 minutes in, she's like, you know, we should get popcorn. And he goes, oh, fine. So he goes to get popcorn. And popcorn dudes talking to the Diet no. Coke dude. Yeah, can you believe Bruce Willis was dead the whole oh. time? <laughs> oh, what a jackass. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's like... That's when theater oh. shootings are totally yeah, warranted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally like, warranted. Yeah. That is tell, like watching a movie with my tell me that guy got fired. Yeah. I'm like, we're pegging way high into the, in the light colors there. Um, so anyway, this has that kind of a thing. Everyone's got to keep quiet on it. I don't know when it's okay to talk about it like right. we just did, but... At least for the initial couple of sure. weeks, let people go see it and go try and figure it out. Is it supernatural? Are they murderers? Are they what the heck is going on? Should you bring kids on? to it? Is it PG thirteen or PG or what is it? It's it's freaky. There's some blood. It's not graphic, but I don't know. Yeah, sex. Um, my um, no. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think. I guess my soon-to-be 14-year-old could probably handle it. But even I was getting creeped out going, oh, Oh, this is just creepy. Let's go see it on Saturday. I can't help but think, like, it's funny, here's me. Is there... Is it bad for young kids? Is there sex? No, but there's blood. (laughs) Blood's fine. Blood and gore, I'm totally fine with that. I'll sit and watch it with my kid. It's bloody, but not sex stuff. Okay, sorry. Parent moment. My son is working a romance, by the way, speaking of kissing. He'll watch any horror movie in the world. He's terrified of kissing. His plan yesterday was to kiss his girlfriend at her locker. How old is he? 
Uh, three. No, he's 11. No. You want to kiss her on the cheek? He's not being doing... No. My it. ninth grader doesn't even want to no. go to homecoming. No. I know. <laughs> this kid if is If he's kissing girl at 11, crazy. guess what he's going to be doing at 14? Yeah. You nip that shit in the bud, sir. He's tired of ki- killing the neighborhood pets? Yeah, right. He's supposed to punch her at her locker in the arm. That's what boys do at that he age. He gives her notes. We went to the dollar store and he spent his allowance. If by notes, do you mean animals. sexting? Oh no, <laughs> yeah. sexting. Dick pics Here's a picture of my is. penis I drew for you. It's probably my best drawing ever. I spent three my hours just on the shade. I <laughs> I sharpied in my pubes. <laughs> that one, my pube. <laughs> There's more like that if you like it. Well, speaking of sex, that Kentucky woman got out of prison. Yeah. Uh, sure. Here's an update on her. Would you please help me welcome Are to the kidding? stage, Kim? Yeah, first of all, <laughs> what is the our future match? president of the United States, Huckabee, stop saying that, no. is standing in front of this thing. Yeah. And encouraging it. And is that then, yeah. Eye of the Tiger in yes. the background? Yes. <laughs> I actually <laughs> said something about yeah, using I have, that. I have okay. that, too. But oh, here is Davis. this. Kim Davis she emerged from somebody? isolation Tuesday into a crowd of more than 3,000 cheering supporters. I just want to give God the glory. He is, his people have rallied, and you are a strong people. And she drank eggs raw out In of a, a two-page cup. order, the federal <laughs> judge who put her behind bars said he was satisfied Davis's office was fulfilling its obligation to issue marriage licenses to all legally eligible couples. But he warned the clerk not to interfere in any way, directly or indirectly, as such action could be considered a violation. Her release was part homecoming, part political rally, with Republican presidential hopefuls Ted Cruz and Mike Huckabee both stopping for a visit. If you have to put someone in jail. Yes. I volunteer to go. Yeah, bye. Let me yeah. go. Deal. Pastor Marsha <laughs> you have to execute Charles someone. Out in support of marriage equality. What do you think about her release today? I'm hoping that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy about her release. We never celebrate when anyone's incarcerated. Gay but what I hope is that she will do, do her job as a public official. Davis could return to work as early as Friday, but her lawyers say she has no plans to violate her conscience. If I come in there as a same-sex couple and I want to get my marriage license signed, what will Kim do? I think we're back to square one. That's why nothing has been resolved. Yeah. So she could end up back in jail? She could end up back here. Yeah, then do it. I will move down there to do this. Is she the only one that can do them, though? I mean, if there are five people behind yeah. the desk, then have them no, do it. That, actually, there was, there was she... discussion that even the deputy didn't have the power. It had to be signed by her. and They can't remove her from office till January, so they're in an absolute deadlock in would, that county. Would future president of the United States Huckabee go to prison for Not the a- for the Muslim who won't no. serve you alcohol no. right. on a plane. Right. You know what they do? Or cab ride that you can't carry alcohol yeah. in. Where is that cab? outrage? Right. This is like parenting, you know, when your kid pulls one off on you and you miss that teaching moment and they actually end up empowered by it. That's what just happened. She's like, no, see, see, I can do whatever I want. I'm empowered. And she then, can believe whatever she yeah. wants. She just can't not do if she that's her job is her job she has to do it if she doesn't yeah. want that job then she needs to go find somewhere else that yeah. she can go and live there her life needs, believe whatever the hell you want there hey. needs to be a separation of church and state and they keep wanting this to be a theology of a christian run society government yeah. mm-hmm. they want it to be a christian government dude, dude i grew up i just called you dude i, I grew up what up bro jewish want to have a bro day Bro-day. and i'll tell you what uh, ha- having grown up jewish and an and atheist jewish Sorry, agnostic, depending. But trying to live in a society that is based on Christian holidays, people just don't understand. It's it's so endemic in our culture that we are a Christian uh, culture. And and I remember, like when I met my ex mother in law, she goes, "So, oh, oh, you're Jewish? That's cute. So, what are you doing for Christmas? Uh, nothing. We don't mm-hmm. celebrate Christmas, right? But you're going to do like Christmas dinner? No, we're Jewish. Right. It's a celebration of the birth of Christ." That we don't acknowledge. Yeah. Right, right. But I mean, you still like do right. dinner and stuff. No, I mean, it's, it's some people, yeah. it, it just can't wrap their so mind around. So you weren't about agnostic it. at that time, or you just wanted yeah. to piss her off? Well, I say agnostic <laughs> to soften my belief. But um, yeah, I probably wanted to piss her off too. <laughs> but it, it's just, it, people don't understand it. So, and, and it's just, they, so especially down south where it is so part of their culture, they just mm-hmm. don't understand that, oh my God, they're. It, their beliefs can't be forced on other people, just as they don't want other right. beliefs forced on them. Just get, it's oh my bizarre. God, get Wait, real. Think, and Huckabee, every- is uh, someone who thinks he can run our nation, is is doing well, this. Well, look right. at the pushback from the right lately, and I, you know, I 
I've, I've talked before about my ultra conservative acquaintance who sends me these crazy emails. Enough is enough. Finally, I'm proud to say that I'm God fearing. The Constitution is based on the Bible, and you know I'm not embarrassed. Oh, I got stuff so, on that too. Hold yeah, on. that pushback stuff is just ridiculous. First, uh, you were right. Uh, Survivor not happy about the song. The band Survivor has oh. objected to the use of its song "Eye of That's the Tiger" corner. during a rally celebrating the release of Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis. They wrote in their verified Facebook page on Tuesday, "No, we do not grant no. Kim Davis any rights to use my tune, the, the sh- Eye of the Tiger." Song. <laughs> We should be happy that someone wants to use it at all. Yeah. yeah. We're only for all shitty right. movies. We are not for... I no longer even associate this with Rocky. I associate this with, like, burger commercials and yes. stuff. <laughs> Back to school commercials, like yeah. parents stretching before yeah. they go buy school yeah. supplies. I actually picture it for political rallies or, like, you know... Um, yeah, something along those lines. Well, a magic show, maybe. This happened to Donald Trump. I don't know if you heard, but he's running for president. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> he tried to use Rockin' in the Free World, and Neil Young said, I knew. <laughs> uh, back in the day, Ronald Reagan wanted to use, yeah. or did use this, and Springsteen said, uh, cut that shit out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And by the Hart way, did Ron. did the same thing to... Uh, Sarah Palin Hart. She oh. did Barracuda, oh. remember? Oh, yeah. Hart was like, Barracuda. Stop yeah, it. That? Sarah Barracuda. Oh. And it's funny, if, um, Bruce is like, and Ronnie, did you actually listen yeah, to the I lyrics know. here? It's not really pro America. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Well, yeah, born in the USA, but listen to the yeah. rest of the song. Why don't you? Talking points going? Republicans. The brochure said this was a pro American song. Good enough for me. <laughs> so we were, uh, I was just talking about how. Yeah, where's the outrage for the uh, or the support of a Muslim who doesn't want to serve alcohol on the airplane or drive yeah. a taxi cab and all that? There is no support. But beyond that, uh, getting to the specifics of the Bible and what they pick out of the Bible, Don Lemon had an interview last night with a Republican uh, senator. I think his name is Bevin. He's running for governor of Kentucky. And uh, this is going to get a little long, but and you can stop whenever if you get bored. But listen to this exchange. <laughs> listen to this. Listen. I want to play this for you because when we're talking about religion here and the interpretation of the Bible, this is something that reminded me of something that I saw on television years ago. It's from a television show called West Wing. Take a look. I don't say homosexuality is an abomination, Mr. President. The Bible does. Yes, it does. Leviticus. 18.22. Chapter and verse. I wanted to ask you a couple of questions while I had you here. I'm interested in selling my youngest daughter into slavery, a sanction in Exodus 21.7. She's a Georgetown sophomore, speaks fluent Italian, always cleared the table when it was her turn. What would a good price for her be? Touching the skin of a dead pig makes one unclean. Leviticus 11.7. If they promise to wear gloves, can the Washington Redskins still play football? Can Notre Dame? Can West Point? Does the whole town really have to be together to stone my brother John for planting different crops side by side? Can I burn my mother in a small family gathering for wearing garments made from two different threads? Think about those questions, would you? So I'd like to think about those questions. He is basically saying that what she is doing is relying on ancient text, even the Bible, to object to something in a modern day life. And it doesn't make sense. It it doesn't even follow the law. Frankly, what you're asking me to do is make commentary on a television program. I'm talking about real life. But it's about life, actual real, real life Bible they're verses. With real they're, people but here they're real life talking. Bible verses. I'm that running he is. for governor. I understand that. I understand governor. that. But Mr. Don, Bevin, will you, you answer my question. question? Those are real life Bible verses that he's I'm, referring to. If you to, would stop talking, that someone I'll try. Is, well, I, I will stop talking, but, anyways. Um, <laughs> those are real life Bible verses that he's referring to. You're and showing about an amazing, an amazing. I'm not showing it. I'm asking you. You're, you're selectively choosing. No, things. but that's what she's doing. That is a criticism of her. Let me tell you. That is here, not the criticism Don, of me. John, Hang on. Will you let me finish? What she's doing. Will you let me finish? Let and then I'll and then you can answer the question. What she has done is interpreted. You're certain, a little bit upset here. I'm not <laughs> upset. I'm just trying to get you to answer the question. You're the one who is not answering the question. What she has done has picked the Bible verses that she wants to interpret them in the way that she wants to interpret them when there are many Bible verses that you can interpret literally and you can draw your own conclusion from. Go ahead and please answer the question. Don, I appreciate your now theological expertise and I appreciate you sharing that with your audience, but the bottom line is this. What I have done as a guy running for governor is propose a solution whereby there is equal protection under the law. 
This is something our current governor and our current attorney general, Jack Conway, should have addressed. Mr. Jack Bevin, Conway, who's also Mr. Bevin, with all due respect, you state, have answered that three times. You've just, you, you've just given me the same answer three times, that you're running for governor and that you've proposed an, uh, legislation and that you've proposed an yes. alternative. This is I understand exactly. that, but you Why still have not Why would we not want a solution? Question. Why would we not want a solution to this? Oh, isn't it frustrating? Want a I want you to answer my to provide I, a way to we, That equal. happened today. That's what the yeah. judge decided. Please answer my question. The answer, my friend. <laughs> anyway, I cut out and it went on for another wind. three minutes. Oh, my God. The answer it, is blowing uh, angry, angry men, and no one's uh, accomplished. And he never did answer it. No. He said, I refuse to comment on a TV show. And he's like, a, Forget that it's a TV show. Yeah. Yeah. What about the Bible verses right. that are no longer relatable to modern society? Right. Yes, and how many years dodgy. There's a lot of dodgy. But you know what? That's another thing. I think there's another offshoot of this whole Trump thing. And, I, you know, I, I, perhaps I'm generalizing, but it seems to be swaying things just a little bit in the direction where we don't need to talk about an actual issue. And we don't need to actually answer a question anymore because everything's a sideshow now. I'd almost like to believe that these people, like this guy running for governor, are actually smarter than they're letting on. And they do recognize the truth of it all. Well, for sure And they are do. doing it for other yeah. nefarious... Yeah. Behind the room corporate well, reasons. And I'm here's I know people on, who believe in both are either pro traditional marriage or pro gay marriage. So, and the people I know that aren't for gay marriage aren't necessarily bigots. They just have their beliefs, and they yeah. aren't doing it from a place of hatred or meanness. Or it's like they believe in civil unions, but believe that marriage is unique to a man and woman. Yeah. And that you can have reasonable conversations with people. I don't automatically say you're a bigot. Right. And you can have your your thoughts, but. It's true what you're saying about pulling, picking, picking and choosing things. Yeah, how come the other ones are null and void now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because she would agree. No, you can't burn your mom, and you, yeah. and you guys not going to get stoned by the town right. for planting right. seeds wrong. Okay, well why? Right. Well why not? Well, if this is your rule book, how did you decide that those were no longer valid? Right. That is every bit of religion. Anyone, everyone, anyone see religion this? is a rule book yeah. made by men to gain power over people. Yeah. Bam. Have you seen this clip going around about this uh, guy defending Islamism? Um, it's about a six-minute clip, and it's all over the internet. I'll have to find yeah, it. Yeah, that one guy that. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Know he's pretty about. well spoken. And yeah, but he's kind of off, and I think oh, he picks yeah. and chooses yeah. a lot yeah, of his absolutely. shit too. Absolutely, but so, what he's yeah. implying is that everyone else just picks and chooses. But right. he does as well, and yeah, I agree. No, I don't think. He's by the way, my Catholic parents are now breaking down and crying that right. I just said that. <laughs> yeah. However, I do. I am spiritual, yeah. and I do. Yeah. Feels there's more than just us going on, and I do thank God every day. Oh, I go to mass on Sundays. I do. I mean, I'm not like someone that's like yeah. looks down upon people that yeah. have beliefs because I have them myself. But yeah. I don't also think that people. It's you're a bigot. You're not. You're this. You're mm -hmm. that. You know what I mean? I just think there's Wait, people. Wait, which that, one? If Chuck's the bigot or not? Yes, and you're okay, not. Thank you. Thank you. And then you. you're Shoo. this and you're yeah. that. Right. I'm an athlete, right? by the way. Yeah. 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 Athletic, <laughs> non bigot. You know who doesn't believe or didn't believe in gay marriage? Yes. Oh, Caitlyn Jenner. I know. Yeah. Isn't that... Well, I was just going to mention, man, we've talked about this before. That it, is the craziest thing. My favorite. brother's gay, and I'm one of the last people on board with gay marriage. I really... I, I, it took me a while to say... But Caitlin, yeah. who's right. seeking yeah. understanding. No, I get that. Here's uh, Ellen. Uh, I get we're that. in the fall season now. It's all debut shows, and Ellen debuted last night for her new 13th season. So, of course, she needed a big celebrity, Caitlyn Jenner. Listen to this. I know you're very conservative, yeah. and, and you have been very conservative. You've, you've said you're Republican, and... and it's not a bad thing. Uh, yes, no, it's not... Yeah, it's, it, I, look, I, the only thing. thing is, you know, a lot of Republicans, I don't want to speak for everyone would vote against all the issues, you know, that you as a woman and you as a trans person right. would want someone to support. I, I agree with that in some cases. Uh, and same-sex marriage? See, I, gay marriage? She um, sounds I sexy. Yeah. That um, I remember 15 years ago, 20 years ago, whatever it was, when this whole gay marriage issue came up. At first, I was not for it. I mean, I thought... I'm a traditionalist. I'm, I'm older than most people in the audience, you know. I mean, I kind of like tradition. And, you know, it's always been a man and a woman. And uh, I'm thinking, I don't quite get it. But as time has gone on, uh, I think like a lot of people on this issue have really changed your thinking here um, to I don't ever want to stand in front of anybody's happiness. You know, that's not my job. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Um, if so annoying um, to me, that word marriage is <laughs> really, is. really that important to you. I, I can go with it, you know. And it's, so it's funny because you're so you're still kind of a little not on board with it. 
I said, no, I'm on board. I mean, yeah. it is going to be the, you know, pretty because much. He just said if marriage is, the, you know, yeah. that's what you want. If you need it that badly, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> no, it's like now that it serves my agenda, yeah, right, I'm right. for it. It's just right. this narcissistic yeah. approach to everything that I can't stand about him. Him, yeah. yeah. I, here's what, here, I like how Ellen wraps this up as far as the word marriage and how people were hung up on that. And that makes so much sense. Le- the, law, the law of the land. Right. So I, I still feel like, yeah, I'm... I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't it's want because so I don't want to stand in front of somebody's happiness. Right. I, and I just think that it's and and I, you know, obviously marriage is an important word because marriage is marriage and equality is equality. So right. if we want the same word that everyone else has, it wouldn't be civil union, it wouldn't be it would be right. so so equality is important for all of us. That was too loud, sorry. Should we saying, yeah, if, if we are saying it's equal, then it's not civil union and you get marriage because then it's not equal. Well, that, well, here's the thing. So so then it's not equal. or So it's, it's sep- different but equal. Can you say that and not sound... I don't know. I think people just need to get over it and thank God yeah. we have. Yeah. Right. It's but, marriage, but people. You think, just, if you just think of like marriage as the, if you look it up in the dictionary... It's always man and woman. There's a, you it's know a what? Word. If you look up in the Bible, you can actually burn your mom. You can. That's what, when I said dictionary, I, I meant Bible. Wait a minute. I <laughs> That's did. what I meant, Bible. Yeah. <laughs> I did, did I say dictionary? Yeah. You did say um, dictionary. That's but what the that, Bible is, like a dictionary, basically. Well, oh, yeah. and, um, yeah. what I was trying to point out is it's an antiquated definition. Sure. That yeah. This definition says man and woman. Yeah, well, because that definition was written in a right. time where we weren't as enlightened. And that's what we strive for as a society, a civilized society, is to continue to become more enlightened. So that to the point where my son and certainly my son's son will go, wait, you guys freaked out about a black person as president? Right. The gay thing was a deal back then? I don't think <laughs> people freaked out. The black yeah. president thing. I don't think people, he had. He got voted in by white people. Yeah. Be, oh, yeah. He yeah. People, it's a. It's still a thing. All the people who are calling him. Well, that's like a racist fringe. stuff. He's a friend. Those are oh, fringe. Oh, that's not majority. Yeah. I don't. I, I don't know you. who I. You guys hang around mm. with, but I don't no, hear I a lot of that. Yeah. I mean, it seems when, to me yeah. fringe. When the president opened up his Twitter account earlier this year, mm. the first set of hundreds of different tweets were all racist. Hundreds of, out of how many people? I don't know if that was the first set either, but they were. They were. There was quite including a bit, some but, knuckleheads here in yeah. Minnesota that the so, Secret Service yeah. came to as their doors. Yeah, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. and there's idiots everywhere. There is, but I think they're just the the loudest. Yeah. Most of For us sure. just go, head down. You I, go to work. You pay your yeah. bills. You raise your kids well, to be decent human if beings. If we're saying if you're saying racism is done, Ferguson, no. Baltimore, on on and on and on and on, it's not done. What I'm saying is all that turmoil. Hopefully. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. back up, back up, back up. Ferguson, yeah, is, a, Ferguson. is racist. Yeah. I mean, he was an asshole yeah. causing trouble yeah. that did shitty shit shooting of and got a righteous shoot of a right. dude who tried to. There's racial tension with right, but that's sure. not racism. Right. It's, I mean, there's, there's racism within the police department. There was racism within the police department. Within the, okay, maybe you're right. I see what you're saying. The race yeah. issue is alive and well. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But it also. I'm hoping that that race issue gets filtered down as the generations Absolute. grow up yeah, and, and it become will. more it just, but yeah. It will. There's we're, no way it can. We're in the middle of a, a tidal wave on this whole race issue, and I think that there's also re- a lot of reverse racism that we are not addressing because we want to be apologists. And You know what I mean? I, I think that... How can I do this without putting my foot in my mouth? I think the score is still 22 to yeah, 1 agreed, in a hockey game but as far like, as issues. Like any tidal wave, there's a surge of anti- I wouldn't call this a tidal wave either. This has been going on since the 60s as far as the fight for racial right. equality. So we're talking about a 50-year tidal wave. But we, are right now, are allowing double standards. I mean, I can walk down the street and be called a cracker and whatever, and that's just, okay, you don't say anything about it. Cause, and I get it. It's that like, just happened in Madison. Uh, a cop uh, was trying to break up a fight between a, uh, a woman and a man, mm-hmm. and he, as he was breaking up a fight, he got surrounded, and mm-hmm. then he heard them say yeah. something, yeah. get him, or yeah. start now, and then suddenly... Was had, that a cop breaking up the fight, or just yeah, a guy? Yeah, it was okay. a cop and breaking up the fight, yeah. and suddenly yeah. there was something around yeah. his neck, and yeah. fortunately backup arrived just yeah. in time before the black and crowd. And I'll tell you something, yeah. I, I'll, if you don't think that the, the, the tone that's going on now, and all mm-hmm. the... that it's not hurting the police and their ability to do what they need to do... It, they aren't cr- leaving the station. No, there yeah. it is. Yeah. It's it's not. That's not gonna a good catch thing. up. And Cops don't leave. They don't want to go on calls. No. They don't want to sit at intersections. Well, they're doubling up because the they're hope is shot. they're going to age out, and my son and hopefully my right. son's sons will go. Absolutely. You guys we are hope so. Freaking weird. weird. Yeah. Right. What the heck? Yep. What the heck was that all about? <laughs>
I'm uh, sweating. This yeah. is this is a good episode. We're having <laughs> fun, aren't we? I suppose before we <clears throat> leave, we got to update Hillary because the email. <laughs> it's oh, so just, funny! I yeah, love this. I know, I know, I know. It's I know, not, I know, it's I know, not yeah. going away, man. It's not going uh, away. Like... Time. Hillary Clinton says she's sorry about using a private email sorry. server while she was Secretary of State. <laughs> A new poll this morning shows 42% of Democrats support her run for president, compared to 52% one month ago. That was a mistake. I'm sorry about that. I take responsibility. Those comments were an abrupt about face for Clinton, who just 24 hours earlier refused to apologize for her use of private email, telling the AP it was allowed by the State Department. Before now, she has said she is sorry only for any confusion her actions may have caused. But late last night, she posted this note to her supporters. I should have used two email addresses. Not doing so was a mistake. I'm sorry about it, and I take full responsibility. Duh. Looking to turn the page, Clinton taped an interview with Ellen, which will air tomorrow. Part of a broader campaign retooling effort to put Clinton in lighter situations, like The Tonight Show, which will be her next stop. But David Axelrod, who helped run President Obama's campaign in 2008, said her aides shouldn't be telegraphing that strategy quite so loudly. She does have problems, and one of them is this issue of spontaneity and authenticity. And the way not to deal with it is to say, uh, my plan is to become more spontaneous and, and authentic. I want to break free. So funny to me. They put out a press release that she's going to be more spontaneous yeah, starting yeah. tomorrow <laughs> at 9. We're going to be more spontaneous. First spontaneous thing yep. she's going to do. Yeah. <laughs> That she will stop by a bush of roses and smell said flower. I'll tell you what, the Clinton machine is amazing. She is no Bill Clinton. I'm yeah, sorry. No, no. He's, he's charming. He's got a personality. She just cannot pull it off, and people don't trust her, and they don't no, like she's her. She's a little rat. What have I said oh, since the beginning so about her? She, she needed to get ahead of this from day one and yeah. go, oops, sorry. Yeah. I screwed up. I'm so yeah. sorry. We, nope, are, wrong, we are about a month away from preseason ending. The game hasn't started no, yet. I know. She will rise, I hope, or not. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm glad that Bernie Sanders is doing so well in New Hampshire, and he has not run one commercial. He doesn't have the money yeah. to, yeah. and he's leading Hillary just on his message right. alone. Yeah. I think that is yeah. empowering. I haven't researched I, him, but I think I like him. Well, here's the thing, though. That's a little bit annoying. Yeah. What are we? There is looking at the Republican. Like, there's no black people in these crowds. Like, have you seen a Bernie Sanders rally? It is like Lily White. You know, <laughs> there's no black people oh, in really? those crowds either. Yeah. So I love how it's like. Look at this guy. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know much about him, but it'll be interesting. Research him. He's, uh, it's hard to argue with anything he says. It's amazing. Oh. And uh, when uh, they were in town, I was going over to uh, WCCO, where I'm every Friday with Jason DeRussia at 9 that. at the mid-morning. At mid-morning. <laughs> mid-morning. Uh, the they were right there at the Hilton, uh, Bernie Sanders, yes. right across. And there were black people out front holding the Bernie Sanders sign right alongside other folks. They thought it was a Black Lives <laughs> rally. <laughs> yeah, they did. <laughs> Uh, I hope his mess his message actually is uh, affecting Hillary, and she's had to address these equal pay stuff that Bernie is championing. Can he overcome the money that she's got, though? He did in New Hampshire. Is my right, point. But I'm just so that means it it's possible. Up, right, New Hampshire is just different than. Yeah, yeah she's going to have a hard time knocking this lovable, wacky professor type yeah. who is spouting James Stewartish common sense right. stuff. Uh, I, I'm glad he's in, and uh, yeah, Elizabeth Warren would be the other one that I would have wanted in, but she's she's not in. Yeah, she was on the other night saying she agrees with Donald Trump. Uh, what was she on? The View had its episode yesterday. That Megan Kelly's a bitch. <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> that would agree. That we Rose, agree on that. That Rosie O'Donnell is a bad. <laughs> mm. No, that the billionaires should be taxed more. All right, and that you know, of course, is. Freaking out the Republican Party. <laughs> That's not what uh, we should do. Well, uh, let's take a break. When we come back, Stephen Colbert had his show debut last oh, night. I forgot about yeah. that. We got some snippets from that. Uh, maybe an update on those players that tackled the ref. Oh, good. Yeah. And then did you hear this? Um, what's her name? Nicole Arbor. She did a fat shaming yes. thing. Did yeah. you listen she's to it? She's unfunny. She's horrible. I mean, the only thing that was offensive to me was how unfunny she was. And she's like a comic. It was gross. You two brought it know. down. Yeah. And then she did something to bring it back up. I grabbed it before it got kicked off again. She's got this fat shaming thing. Fat shaming thing. Anyway, we'll play as much of that as you want to listen. But first, we have to take a break, all right? The Twin Cities Hit Show. We'll be right back.
Third Street Brew House, built on a perfect site in Cold Spring, Minnesota. Combining the state-of-the-art brewing facility with exceptional water. Hello, did we mention Cold Spring, Minnesota? They have a dream team of world-class brewers, resulting in unprecedented crafted beers. The core styles of Bitter Black IPA, Lost Trout Brown Ale, and Rise to the Top Cream Ale are intriguing yet satisfying. And look forward to seasonal and specialty beers. Nothing fancy, no fuss. It's all about the beer at Third Street Brew House. Mac Men. Don't let your computer problems drive you mad. We are Mac Men, Minnesota's premier tech consultants and problem solvers for Macs, mobile devices, troubleshooting, training, and much more. No more dragging your computer all over town because we come to you. We love making house calls to your home or small business. Mac Men. Call 612 345 8005. The one and only Chart House. Your destination, whether dining for two, drinks with friends, or making up for that night with friends join us at the chart house for brunch dinner or drinks hi i'm josh ripper and i'd like to invite you to my restaurant and i'll buy half your dinner go to charthouserestaurant.com to find out more visit charthouserestaurant.com today for your special offer and then come visit chart house in person your table is waiting Let's face it, summer is short here in Minnesota, and we want to fill it up with concerts, ball games, and good times. Well, for a great night, beep, 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 yeah. log on to Blue and White, blueandwhitetaxi.com. Hey there, everybody. I'm Rusty Gatenby, your TV buddy, and I'm always up for a good time, but I've learned planning is part of the party. Do the pregame, do the pre-concert, and do the pre-plan. Pre-plan your ride, that is. Log on to blueandwhitetaxi.com. With the biggest fleet of taxis in town, you can enjoy every last drop of summer and get home safely and on time. No worries about money and tips. You set it all up before the fun with blueandwhitetaxi.com. Yeah, make it a great night. Log on to the blue and white, blueandwhitetaxi.com. No shirt, no shoes? Well, <laughs> that's your problem. You're listening to the Twin Cities Hit Show. Say it fast three times. We just dare you. Time's gone inside out. I gotta change that blue and white commercial. Yeah, it's not summer anymore, mister. It's fall. I told you it didn't not last yet. long. It's more weeks. Yeah. See, it's I, was, I know. Officially, it doesn't feel like summer. Officially, I could let it go for another mm-hmm. two weeks. Yep. Yeah. But who are we kidding? We could yeah. get we could eke one out. We never yeah. know. We never know. We gotta hope I'm an for, optimist. We gotta <laughs> hope for at least some nice sure. Indian summer weather when the leaves are Remember September eleventh, two thousand one. It was eighty degrees. Was it? Guys, yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. It's my son's birthday. Yeah. Mm. It's coming up Friday. Mm. I was gonna do a whole birthday weekend because we you know, we were busy last weekend. We had uh, issue medical issues on mm-hmm. my uh, my wife's side of the family. Hello, Lori, if you're listening. Huh. Um, stop having issues, Lori. Stop it. <laughs> stop it now. Uh, so I didn't see the kids. So I'm like, okay, this week we'll have a happy, we'll Reed's birthday's Friday. Maybe we'll go horseback riding on Saturday or we'll go to Valley Fair. We haven't done that this year. So, oh, no. Uh, Ruby's got an all-day volleyball tournament on Sunday. Uh, then there's a all-day uh, fundraiser on Saturday. And then there's... I'm like, are you kids? Stop yeah, it. They ruin everything. Stop it they with do. your They're agenda. Yeah. 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 With your extracurricular. <laughs> they are very selfish about oh, their scheduling. It's this boarding. Yeah. We sold a cabin. We had a cabin in Wisconsin, and it was great. And then it was like, oh, the kids have stuff to do all the oh, time, yeah. and we're just paying for this place we've never used yeah. because you guys suck. Where was it in Wisconsin? It was in, um, it was range. It was called, a uh, big round lake, so it would be like by Amory, like an hour BRL? and a half. BRL? Hmm. Hour and a half away. It was yeah. close enough, but... BRL. Big round lake. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. then. Hmm. We used to go up to uh, hmm. Hayward. That's all I was yeah. asking. We would turn hmm. right out. That would be our exit to get off of. 
Stephen Colbert oh. took over Dave Letterman in the Late Show last night. Here's a wrap up. Well, folks, if I knew you're going to do that, I would have come out here months ago. <laughs> Mr. George Clooney. George! On display was Colbert's biting sarcasm, a genuine characteristic his fans have enjoyed for years. What is it like uh, to be the arm candy in a relationship? Because <laughs> she's the very serious person. Yes. You're, she must just say, like, we're going to meet some in extremely intelligent people Smart tonight. People. <laughs> these are not, These are not show folk, please. Don't talk. More of this, less of that. Yeah, Donald that Trump is swearing off of Oreos, okay? He claims, he claims that Mexico is taking our economy and they're ripping it in two. The Comedy Central transplant, who played a political pundit on TV for nearly a decade, channeled some he of that humor and quick wit. He's the only candidate brave enough to deport the Keebler elves. <laughs> Colbert kept up that pace while talking with 2016 Republican presidential candidate, Governor Jeb Bush. Your mom said maybe we shouldn't have another Bush or another Clinton. Oh, she was in the just White joking. House. She was. <laughs> <laughs> she call her up and say, Mom, you're embarrassing me. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Please drop totally. me off a, a block from the White House. I'll walk from here. <laughs> Colbert is a polished showman, and the comedian gave us a small taste of what he's capable of. Different shows, but different Backed by band leader, 28-year-old John Baptiste. He sang there at the end with like an all-star. He had uh, Mavis Staples. He had the lead singer from Alabama Shakes. He had Ben Folds. Uh, it is back in the uh, the Ed Sullivan Theater, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I guess they never. There's a dome, a huge. You know, think about the State Theater or the Orpheum Theater, and the you know the inside decorative dome. Yeah. And they never did anything with for Letterman. And now it's all lit up oh, and it looks cool. very cathedral like. Oh, wow. All the big chandeliers and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And it looks really cool. Um, someone, he, oh, yes. uh, someone had mentioned that his, his show is uh, going to give a run for Fallon, who, and I forgot who wrote this, who said that Fallon's becoming a little more irrelevant. And the, I, I watched one episode on my own, which I. Fallon? I, yeah. And to be honest, yeah. it was him and Bill Hader spitting food on each other. And yeah. when this went on for like 10 minutes, and I thought, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. It's nothing about it is spontaneous. Yeah. It's all scripted. There's that yeah. sense that they all know what they're going to say before. I mean, granted, you give them an idea of what the questions are going to be, yeah. but. It, it's just kind of muggy. and Yeah, it's very know. sad. It feels like SNL. Yeah, it does. And he, uh, he did a great thing last night. Stephen Colbert is like showing off his set for a moment. And he's like, you know, behind me, this is a huge TV. Uh, over there, over the uh, guest shoulder, that's in, that wall is a big monitor. In fact, I can watch everything from sporting events. And he shows like these monkeys yeah. boxing. Psh, psh, psh. I know where we're going with this. And then, and then he's like, here, I'll see what else is on. And he shows the, um, uh, the Ticker guide, oh. the, you know, the channel mm -hmm. guide. And then he hits NBC, and there's Jimmy Fallon. He goes, oh, look, there's Jimmy Fallon. And Jimmy's talking to a guest, and he looks to camera. Hey, Steven. <laughs> and he goes, what do you got on the show? And he goes, oh, I have Pink, and blah, 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 blah. He goes, oh, I have George Clooney, and blah, blah, blah. Well, good luck. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh that's he, fine. Kept, okay. he goes, I'll see you in the locker room after the show. <laughs> okay, blah, blah, blah. I watched the whole show last night, so then it closes, and then there's a cold close. It fades up from black, and there's sure. Stephen Colbert in a locker room putting his tie in there, and then camera widens out, and there's Jimmy Fallon putting his stuff in a locker. Oh, fun. Good show tonight. Yeah, you too. And then well, they walk which away. is so yeah. odd, because it's always yeah. been that rivalry and that, yeah. you know... Leno. Yeah, yeah, like this hate. Leno this, hatred. Yeah, because yeah, right. Leno was a douche taking yeah. over the Tonight right. Show from Dave yeah. Letterman. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and but, I, Letterman, let's be, he, as funny as he was, total douche. Oh, <laughs> there, okay. Everyone that's yeah. ever been on his show, yeah. it's like he won't talk to you. Yeah. You yeah. sit there during break, yeah. and it's like silence. During, Unless you're you know. like a hot intern. Well, maybe, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or not a hot intern. Did yeah. you see her? No, I never saw Ooh. pictures. <laughs> Here's a moment with uh, Jeb Bush last night with Stephen Colbert. Do you, think, do you think that you could bring people together? Because everybody says they want to bring people yeah. together. But when you get down to the campaigning or get down to what passes for governing now, it often ends up being uh, just a game of blood sport. You it know, is. You attack the other person. And the other side can't possibly do, say, or have planned for anything good. So I'm going to say something uh, that's heretic, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't think Barack Obama has bad motives. I just think he's wrong on a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't ascribe. Oh, you're so close to getting them to clap. <laughs> <laughs> you were so close. You were this. 
it's close. No, but Remember this, you gotta pause. You if gotta you pause start... till they clap and then hit them what they don't want to hear. <laughs> you gotta, you know that's no. hard, that's hard. If you start with the premise that people have good motives, because you can for, find common ground, because even for though seven they don't years, agree. Because on the Republican side, there's been the, the emotional needle has been nailed, bang, in one spot, Obama bad, you know, <laughs> maybe not American, Obama and bad. And vice versa. <laughs> and, then, and then the Democrats have to argue like he's the best just to counter that emotional narrative that the Republicans have. You think you could change that sort of, the, the other side is the devil? Yeah, I do. Oh, and I'd I think, be glad I think, to hear that. And look, in state capitals all across Honestly, the country, I would love it. in state capitals, this doesn't happen to the same extent it does in Washington. Yeah, in the mayor's fun. offices, there are people that disagree with one another, and they're mm -hmm. allowed to talk to one another. Mm -hmm. You can be friends with people that, that you don't agree with on everything. I mean, we have to restore a degree of civility. Oh, so there you go. That was funny. Did you like his show? Uh, I did. I, I thought I was going to like it more. Yeah. Uh, I like that moment when he is so articulate and funny at the same time. His choice of words are just like smart poetry to me. I, I no, I mean it. like Colbert show when he had the yeah. Oh, when he had the Colbert yeah, report. The, the Colbert report. I, did like I did. It? I didn't watch yeah. it enough. Yeah. I thought it was yeah. an amazing bit that he was able to yeah. do. It got old to me yeah. after a while, yeah. though, because yeah. it was yeah. just like, all right, we yep. get it. Well, yeah. what's weird to me is hearing him now, it's like I wouldn't even recognize him. He drops that whole persona yeah. and that affect, and he's... He's, he's a different person. He did yeah. start off with, hello, nation. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> he did actually this, uh, he sang the national anthem, the, the show Open Cold with a video bit, and it's like in a Little League field, and he starts singing the national anthem with someone. Then it cuts to different cities all across as they continue mm -hmm. on various a cappella versions of the national anthem, St. Louis, Farms, uh, New York City, and then it goes back to that farm field, and it was kind of cool. Yeah. And then it ends, and then the umpire yanks off his hat and says, "Play ball!" It's John Stewart yanks uh -huh. off his helmet. Let's uh -huh. play ball! So that was oh, kind of cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. So now Emilia Santanello got to the uh, the nitty gritty with uh, Stephen Colbert because, of course, CCO is CBS. Uh, by the way, I'm on every Friday on Mid Morning with Jason. DeRusha. I like her. I think. Would I like her? <laughs> Uh, I very, think so. She seems really likable. Here's a moment with Stephen Colbert talking about, has he ever been to Minnesota? I have been to Minnesota. I lived in Chicago 11 years. At some point, you, you end yeah. up in Minnesota. So I have been to the Minnesota State Fair. Norwegian dairy farmers, very seriously, getting their free milk and their donuts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, you the birthing of a calf. Yeah, all I went that. up there, yeah. So let me ask you something. Yes. Do the mayors of Minneapolis and St. Paul legally have to be twins? <laughs> no. It's not nope. in law. No. They don't have to be, they don't no have longer? To be twins. No, no they longer. They rescinded that law. Yeah. Yes. Anything else you want to add? Maybe something that we don't know about you? Hmm. I was an altar boy. Hmm. I was an altar boy for 11 years. Never made priest. <laughs> <laughs> Never made the squad. I got cut at the last minute. Because I love the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. He is also a devout Catholic. He is. And goes every that. Sunday and hmm. taught his kids when they were younger. Uh, catechism or whatever he Sunday is. school. Actually, I saw an interview he did with um, Jack White, and he, Jack White was raised Catholic, and they were having who was more Catholic, and they were, they were he was quizzing them with just, you know, questions yeah. about the Catholic faith and catechism, and it was interesting. It was really cool. I, he, he's likable. I like that. Him and Jim Gaffigan, out I of the closet what Catholic. Catechism yeah. is Sunday school. Oh. Okay. It's the rules, the law. That, they called it catechism yeah, when I was a kid. Still, my kid learned catechism. Yeah. Yeah, catechism. I got confirmed. I had to do all that stuff. Yeah, Here's yeah. how dumb I am about Catholicism. I went to a Catholic college, and I went to a religion class, one of my first days of Catholic college, whenever it is. Mm -hmm. um, and I walk in, and one of my friends had something on her forehead. I'm like, oh, Sarah. Yeah. And I, that's the first time in the age of 18 so that I realized. So did you quickly go out to the smoking pit and rub some on just to fit in? Uh, no. Not my stuff. Grab a Marlboro Light stub and rub it on your head. Not <laughs> my stuff. All right, so look what's happening on the monitor here. I'll, let's update this. The uh, oh. the football players who nailed the referee that He's in video. High school? No, that's the assistant coach. Oh. That's the oh. latest. Here, here, oh. we'll update you on it. Under the Friday night lights of Texas, this game ends with a stunning shot. One player from San Antonio's John Jay High School spears a game referee in the back, and then a second player strikes. The video clips have been watched online millions of times in just a few days. The incident is shameful to us and is deeply troubling to all of us who for many years have been associated with athletics and with extracurricular activities in our school district. The video was so shocking that the local prosecutor in Marble Falls, Texas, where the game was played, is considering filing assault charges against the two players. Both have been suspended from school. But the jarring video doesn't appear to tell the whole story. 
School district officials said some players were not happy about the officiating throughout the game, and they say it's possible that one of the school's assistant coaches, Mac Breed, might have influenced the players' behavior by telling some players that the, quote, ref should pay for cheating us. That was that black person you saw, the yeah. older gentleman, okay. that's the coach. Breed has been put on administrative leave. Maybe the emotions got the best of him based on, you know, his opinion on officiating and the alleged comments. Um, you know, and that's that's what's very difficult for us to be able because that's not what we're all about. According to school district officials, the two players, a sophomore and a senior, also alleged that the game's ref directed two different racial slurs yeah. at the J football yeah. players during the game. The game umpire has been identified as Did Robert he call Watts. you idiots? He reportedly uh... told TexasHighSchoolFootball.com, I like to keep my officiating quiet. Libel and slander have been committed against me. I will be contacting the appropriate people soon, and any statement from me will come at a later date. ka -ching. Despite yeah. the allegations, school district officials remain critical of the players targeting a defenseless referee. Out in the spirit of competition, the ultimate authority and respect needs to be given to those officials, regardless of what may have been said or assumed said. Yeah. Again, as we deal with law enforcement, there if that happened, there's a forum. Take it up later. You don't assault someone over it. Well, yeah. not only that, the first thing you do, I mean, I'm not saying that it didn't happen. My mm -hmm. gut is it didn't. Mm -hmm. You shut somebody up. You, all right, we're in mm -hmm. trouble for doing this. Shut someone up by saying, oh, he was saying racist things. It's like, yeah. oh, what do you, so I'm glad he said I'm going to, and it's not even yeah. a ka-ching ka yep. ka thing. It's yep. a, hey, I didn't, and I'm yeah. going to go after you yeah. and prove you wrong because yeah. that yeah. didn't happen that way, yeah. you know? So that, people, yeah, that is that is good that he's saying, look, I'm, right. I'm going to go through the procedure, right. the legal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, yeah. you should do this. Yep, this is this is so. T this is this is what happened to me. He went time. on to say, "If I see you on the street, I will run you down." Yeah. He, he did say that. that. Yes, <laughs> like a. I will totally. I will run you down like a. <laughs> Good old time. But in the meantime, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, I can't tell you how many times I'd, I'd write it. I dare you go to my house, you cockroaches. I, you. Here's something that's <laughs> yeah. funny though. When you look at him straight on in that video where it shows him getting hit, he's kind of like this fat chubby yeah. guy, and then all of a sudden a ponytail yeah, appears. I know. I want to know what the story there is. No, that's his brains coming out. Boom. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times I'd write a ticket as a cop. To someone who legitimately was speeding, and you know they just happened to be the car that I saw. Mm -hmm. I write them a ticket, and when it's done, it's all about race, and 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 it just got so old. Or you know, it would come out that maybe I I called him a the N word, which right. yeah, never. I mean, well, not back in the day. You call him Nancy. <laughs> yeah, my yeah. Nerd. nerd. <laughs> yeah. My dad was a um, policeman when we lived in Chicago, so this was like. Uh, set from 73 to 76. Oh, no racial tension there so, then. But yeah. he, um, it was a suburb. But anyway, he has his old ticket book and mm -hmm. he has written on the back the interaction. So, in case, so they didn't have right. the recording stuff back right. in the day, but yeah. in case anything were to ever come old up. School yeah. body cam. Right. Yeah. It was just he would write down what yeah. went down yeah. just to protect yourself. Let me guess. A lot of it was, and I was awesome. I was great <laughs> and very yeah. respectful. Were, were I did not look at her boobs. <laughs> 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 undulating, <laughs> milky, sweaty, heaving, <laughs> boobs. Did not look at them. No, but Sweating, it's amazing, heaving. Even then. <laughs> never looked once, <laughs> twice maybe, but never once. Uh, do you hear what happened to the uh, cops up in uh, Rockford? No. One guy uh, fell through the roof trying to apprehend this guy, and this sounds like a real <clears throat> model citizen that they were going after. This happened last night. Going after a roofer? Police were looking for a man wanted on two assault charges for beating two men with a baseball bat at the mud rally in Aiken County over the weekend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Back up a second. We're at a mud rally in Aiken County. I do believe you shot me with a baseball bat. <laughs> I reckon. Uh, see, I'm guessing a lot of crimes happened at that mud rally. You but, took my Coors Light, and I ain't putting up with that no more. And I put that thing down. I hit you with this baseball bat real hard upside the head. I'm sure they were in the middle of a debate about the Bible <laughs> and its <laughs> influence on society. But anyway, here's the what happened. Officer spotted the suspect upstairs in the home. The canine tracked him into the attic, and I'm told the officer and the suspect struggled in the attic, and that's when the officer <laughs> lost his footing and fell through the ceiling. He fell uh, just about two stories down Yikes. and hit his head. He has possible, possibly oh. serious head injuries. But again, I'm told he was alert and talking when he was airlifted to the hospital. A woman and her three kids were inside at the time. Police tell oh. me they are now questioning them. The suspect, mm -hmm. he is in custody. He is at the hospital at this hour. The Rogers police chief told me that after uh, the canine's partner fell through the ceiling, the canine bit the suspect several times. Who let the dogs out? Ooh. 
Who can tell in that town if it was he has brain injuries? Yeah, yeah I was going to say. <laughs> well, I think after he just said, oh, shit. Uh, I tell you, I, to get more law enforcement stuff, but I had the opportunity to go with on canine tracks. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, but those are fun. You know, when you're like, a dude is missing, and it's a bad dude, and you're looking for him. And I remember working with the canine guys, and you're out searching, and you're like, this is futile. This dog has no clue what it's doing. All of a sudden, all of a sudden you see the ears go up, and gone. And, oh, yeah. and the partner looks at me, don't say a word. He's got him. Give it a second. Ow! 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 ow. Yeah. And wow. they get him. Oh, Now, who man. does better, the canine patrol or the feline patrol? Do the kitty cat cops, do they do well? Well, we actually got away from feline because they're hard to feed. We had an aviary patrol, and those oh. trained parakeets. They ignore the, the cats ignore the, the suspect. I give up. Tell them to stop pooping on me. <laughs> it's a new shirt. Um, can you see if we're still on the air? I mean, we're almost out of time anyway, but I just got a signal that are we still going? Yeah. Okay. My my computer just went off there. Never mind. Don't scare I'll me. I'll get like it said later when I watch my porn. Um. So, did you hear what happened with the United Airlines CEO overnight? No. no. Oh, some uh, bribery going on, and some people got fired. United Airlines <laughs> has a new CEO this morning. United ousted Jeff Smysick and two other senior executives on Tuesday. Their departures came five months after a Bloomberg News investigation led to a corruption probe at the country's third largest airline. Investigators are looking into United's dealings with the New York, New Jersey Port Authority, which runs New York's airports, tunnels, and bridges, and whether airline executives attempted to influence David Sampson, the Port Authority's former chairman. Okay, so check this out. So it's the guy who runs the airport, and he is in charge of the money, and United Airlines was wanting some love, some financial love. So here's what Happen. United added a money losing flight from Newark to Columbia, South Carolina, <laughs> after Samson reportedly joked at a dinner with the airline's executives that adding such a flight would help his family travel to his wife's South Carolina home. <sighs> at the time, United was seeking approval for millions in improvements to Newark Airport, where it is the biggest carrier. Isn't that oh my God. awesome? Uh, you know, it's like, fantastic. <laughs> my wife's got this kind of. Maybe Chris Christie can, uh, you know, oh, take over. Goodness. He's tied into this. Huh? <gasps> Probably not. CBS News travel editor Peter Greenberg says this incident is sure to expose the way airlines have been doing business for years. The question is, how much is offered? How much was delivered? And is it serving the public interest? The flights were in service from September 2012 to April 2014. And? They stopped shortly after Samson, an appointee of New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, <laughs> resigned amid the so-called Bridgegate scandal. Oh. It was alleged at the time that Samson and aides to Christie, working with Port Authority officials, orchestrated lane closures to the George Washington Bridge as political retaliation against a local mayor. Oh, did, what did I say the other day, Rusty? And you're like, oh, well, No, Chris Christie, Christie wasn't. He was no, just, he's not part he was of one either of either the, people and you're fine. That dude <laughs> is. That I same don't. dude who's yeah. at a cocktail party saying, you know, I understand you folks would like some new improvements for your airline. Where there's you smoke, know, there's like. fire. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Well, the thing, too, is I would never be able to do... I just am paranoid. I would assume yeah. that I'm being recorded all the time. I'm being... Who does this stuff? I, that takes some balls. It, it, white entitled bastards yeah. who, yeah. Yeah, the, you know. Oh, I yeah. I wouldn't just say it's white bastards. I, yeah. those, there's yeah. been some uh, black corruption in the, yeah. you know, doing that same shit. It's just they yeah. kind of are in this bubble and they get some power and it feels good. Daddy like Warbucks. A, Daddy Warbucks. Right, right. Some wah, 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 serious wah, wah. balls to do that kind of crap. Wow. Like women do that too. Yeah. I just find yeah. that hilarious that, yeah, <laughs> yeah. at a cocktail party. <laughs> Yeah, I got a funny situation. Oh, I'll make it happen. I'll make it happen, Suddenly son. There's an entire yeah. jet dedicated to flying to this person's summer home. Yeah. And and think of all the money and the, the schedule changes and the baggage handlers and the fuel costs. I mean, this and is imagine the, the eight people on that jet going, yeah. wow, I can pick a seat anywhere. Right. <laughs> I'm on standby. I'm getting on, right? I'm for sure getting on. I get first class <laughs> upgrades all the time on that flight. There's no one on it except for this loud old lady yeah. with wow. horrible tan <laughs> bragging about her. <laughs> Her beach house. Let's not talk about Hillary Clinton in this. I don't see that that has anything to do with it. Well, 
So we've killed more than an hour. Do we even have time to do fat shaming? What are what are people's schedules? Should we give it just a quick? Yeah, I think that's so interesting. All right. It's so so Nicole Arbor, I believe, is her name. Is she? A, she's a comedian, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't know about that until the fact that she yeah. did this. But. She's got uh, on her uh, YouTube page. I mean, her videos. She's got a whole bunch of them, and some of them get you know a million plus. This one got, I think, a couple of million. YouTube took it down the other day, yesterday. But she got it back up, I guess. But uh, her bit is she tries to make controversial subjects, one of her bits, make controversial subjects more understandable in a comedic way. And so she thinks being obese is there's a simple solution. And here it is. Dear fat people, ah, some people are already really mad at this video. What are you going to do, fat people? What are you going to do? Wait, what are you going to chase me? Really? You're going to chase me? I can get away from you by walking at a reasonable pace. Fat shaming? is not a thing. Fat people made that up. That's the race card with no race. Yeah, but I couldn't fit into a store. That's discrimination. Uh, no. That means you're too fat and you should stop eating. Everybody just needs to make more sense. There's a race card. There's a disability card. There's even a gay card because gay people are discriminated against. Wrongfully so. The gay card's covered in glitter. It's fucking magical. Are you gonna tell a doctor that they're being mean and fat shaming you when they say you have fucking heart disease? I said, I'm not talking about people who have a little bit of cushion for the pushing. And if there's people watching this with a specific health condition, this is not aimed at you. I'm talking about the 35% of North Americans who are obese. That means you are so fat, you are affecting your own health. Big boned isn't a thing. How stupid do I look? Don't answer that. There are no fucking skeletons that look like the Michelin Man. Fat shaming. Who came up with that? That's fucking brilliant. Yes, shame people who have bad habits until they fucking stop. Fat shaming. If we offend you so much that you lose weight, lose, lose weight, I'm okay with that. You are killing yourself. Yeah. I'll sleep at night. Maybe I'm a little jealous that you get to eat whatever you want. Obesity is a disease. Yeah, so is being a shopaholic. But I don't get a fucking parking pass. It would make a lot of sense if I did. I'm the one with all the bags. Fat people parking spots should be at the back of the mall parking lot. Walk to the doors and burn some calories. Why are we helping them? Wanna die quicker? Come this way. It's assisted suicide. <laughs> Isn't that ironic? Okay, so it goes on. Yeah. A, a comedic it's, way? I yeah, was waiting yeah, for that yeah, part yeah. to kick in. Yeah. As far as comedy goes, she's going for the lowest hanging brain. fruit oh, I've ever God, seen. Yeah, she it's said just, cushion for the push in, yeah, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that is, I mean, there's just nothing funny. I, I'll give the, hidden within that are some nuggets that need to be addressed. Our, our, our right. massive obesity problem, no yeah. pun intended. But guess what? They don't yeah. want to hear it from a skinny chick. Yeah, and... Yeah, and I mean, mean, with a mean twist yeah. to it. If you really give a shit, have a real platform. But this isn't even funny. No. Well, and to say fat shaming is okay. No, being a bully is never okay. Yeah. And is, yeah. Who has had those thoughts when you see an overweight person in a scooter and targeting you? You know, if you were walking, right. you might be burning off sure. some of that yeah. stuff. Sure. But could she do, so it's really easy to do that in front of a camera and put it out there. Let's get you an audience of obese people and then you go ahead and <laughs> say exactly what you said. Yeah. She could run away at a reasonable walk. Yeah. Well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just like, ha- be, do, if you really believe that and you're going to mm-hmm. say it in that way, do it in front of an audience of morbidly obese and, and then talk about it. Yeah. Uh, shaming of anyone is not okay. The no. scarlet letter is not okay. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, not funny. Is there a, a way for people to lose weight? Obviously, I need to lose 40. I know how to do it. You eat less. Right. I read about this, by the way. And you exercise. Yeah. Huh. That's you eat it, less yeah, and you exercise. Oh. Calories in yeah. oh. and out. We I choose, should talk after the show. I choose not to do that at the moment. Yeah. You will. You and do you think that like fat people are sitting at home and they didn't realize they were fat? You know what I mean? I'm pretty yeah. sure that they're they know this and Have well, you seen Carly McMenamin's bit on uh she she's in bed with a guy and uh she she, she gets up, she walks around. She's a very heavy set comedian and she goes, um the guy's like, Wow, you are just not uh you you're you're not embarrassed at all. She goes, Well, it's not like you didn't know I was fat when you came to bed with me. Yeah. Just you'd have to hear it in her voice, but she describes it very well. It's true. They they all know. I mean, the ratings came in five more than five million people tuned into Stephen Colbert last night. I thought you were talking about the show. Yeah, like, I was just what? gonna say. Yeah, <laughs> no, they just talked oh. about the, bigger than projected. Uh, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna crank this on my little iPad, and I'm gonna I do go bike and run because I'm an athlete. It's, mm-hmm. it's been established, yeah. <laughs> and I've been trying to eat less. I don't know how those Oreos ended up in my mouth yeah. yesterday. 
much. It happens. Uh, it happens. I love Oreos. If they're in the house, they're going to get eaten. Can you eat them without a glass no. of milk? Because no. I can't no. eat them no. just I like I believe in the Oreo. Bible, you're not, you can't. Right. That's a rule. I think it is. It's Leviticus. I don't subscribe 16. to your Bible. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't push your religion on me. Enjoy hell. <laughs> Enjoy hell. <laughs> That'll be, save a spot for me. Uh, so who do we have on the show tomorrow? Uh... Oh yeah. Uh, By the way, our Brian thoughts, Miller. our thoughts and prayers go out to Rebecca Wood. She was scheduled to be on the show today. Uh, we hope to get her back on the show. She's fine. Uh, yeah, Rebecca, yeah. we're thinking about you. She's a good woman. You have who? Brian Miller tomorrow. Okay, talk movies with him. Is he? The, he's the movie. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure he's we'll talk great. movies. He's yeah. smart. He knows. He's he's funny. Oh, I will reveal accidentally a fake ending to the visit to him. Uh, okay. And see how upset he gets. <laughs> Do it. Right? <laughs> Hope he's not listening. <laughs> uh, what would be a good fake twist to a... They're the, aliens. The grandma was dead the whole time. Okay. The grandma was dead the whole time. <laughs> Wait, did I just boil it for real? <laughs> Man. Because <laughs> the grandpa was actually an alien and killed her. Oh. You people are ridiculous. <laughs> we'll think it's over. All right. So have a good hump day, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. On this shortened work week. Hey, I got to plug my... G- I'll be at Goonies Comedy Club this weekend coming up, by the way. I know we'll forget to no talk one, about tomorrow. No one cares. Yeah, they will. Goonies Comedy Club, Rochester, Minnesota. Friday, Saturday night. Is there, do he's the, going to be there drinking. Yeah. He's, not yeah, actually yeah. No. he's not actually on <laughs> the show. He's going to be heckling the comedians, of course. He's going to be there with yeah. their drink specials. I'm going to be bum. at Oak Depot Saturday at about 11. <laughs> <laughs> carpool, I'll be at the car, picking up my kids at Holy Family Academy <laughs> here at 3. So. <laughs> Later tonight, it's the McDonald's drive through at about 6.30 at Hopkins. <laughs> I'll be the one sobbing in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> so you can find us you all there. Screw you two. <laughs> Uh, get the eye of the tiger, Chuck. Yeah, I'm going to work it out.